everyone, my name is Sarah. And I'm Aaron, and today we will be talking about our favorite productivity apps for the iPad. We will be giving you two different perspectives, one from a student and one from a business owner. Alright, so let's start off um, the student's perspective. So I'm a student, I'm currently studying physiotherapy, and the first app I want to talk to you about is about note-taking. Simple note-taking with your iPad. Now, there are many note-taking apps out there. We have Good Notes, we have Notability, they're all very good at imitating paper, but Concepts has a different vision in mind, originally designed for architects and designers. This allows me to take notes, write, and scribble things down endlessly. This is especially useful when we're doing a mind map, because there's nothing more annoying than running out of space when you're 90% done. And on top of that, the pen tool is the best out there. While most other apps have pen styles that is pressure-based, um, the Concepts Pen Tool is based off velocity, which means the faster your stroke, the thinner it gets. This feels good and natural as most real pens if you're writing it on paper. The faster you write your stroke, the thinner it gets. So this just feels so real. So the first app I'm going to be talking about for work is Toggle. I'm a business owner and I run three different businesses, so time tracking is an essential part of my productivity workflow. I know time tracking can be controversial, with some people in the productivity space viewing it as unnecessary and obsessive. While I do agree that if used in an unhealthy way, time tracking can be detrimental to your mental and sometimes physical health, I personally have found that it does more good than harm for me. In the past, I used Toggle to track how productive I was during a day. Trust me when I say it's a surefire way to burn out. But that's a story for another time. We can go more in-depth in the future about time tracking. Let us know if this is something that you guys would be interested in seeing in a future video. Now back to Toggle. I use Toggle as my time tracking app together with another app called Timery. So Timery is an iOS and iPad OS app that makes time tracking on Toggle so much easier. Toggle's iOS and iPad app is pretty horrible and extremely inconvenient for time tracking on your phone and iPad. Timery though has widgets and Siri shortcuts that make it so much faster and easier to start and stop timers. The only annoying thing is that tapping on the widget automatically brings you to the app and there's no way around it. But I guess it's just a one second delay that isn't too big of a deal. Toggle is super important for my workflow because as someone who runs multiple businesses, it helps me to keep track of how much time I'm spending on each and how long I'm spending on certain segments of the businesses so I know what I should cut down on or delegate. Both Toggle and Timery have free plans, but I pay for the Timery subscription so I'm able to have unlimited Siri shortcuts and save timers on my iPhone and iPad widgets. It's only $1.50 a month, so it's very worth it for the value it brings to my work. Coming back to studying, the next app I'm going to talk about is Margin Notes. Now, this app is an extremely niche app that focuses on PDF editing. It allows you to add multiple PDFs into what they call a study notebook. And then you can link it all up into a mind map. Now, there is a Mac and iPad version of it, which is very important for me because I can annotate on the iPad and then view it on a Mac. Now, let me give you some examples of what can be done. Here, you can add in all your PDF documents, rearrange and easily switch between them. Like most other PDF editors, you will be able to annotate, insert text boxes, but this one feature sets Margin Notes Editor apart. You can add in margins on all pages. Good Notes, Notability, and Note Shelf cannot do anything similar to this. But this is where Margin Note really shines. You are able to extract information out of the PDFs and add it into a mind map. You are able to link and connect things together across different PDFs. You can write your notes on the mind map section and link it back to the PDFs. And they even have Apple Pencil support that allows me to collect and join all of the excerpts using gestures. Don't like mind maps? You can even view it in an outline format and edit the contents inside of the mind map. This is how I normally extract preliminary information. Okay, so my next iPad app for work is Otter.ai. Otter is an AI-powered transcription app and is one of the most accurate speech-to-text apps available. It basically converts voice conversation into text that you can copy and paste into apps or documents for storage or further edits. A lot of journalists use this app to transcribe interviews, I think. It can even detect different voices and will separate the voices into speaker 1, speaker 2, speaker 3, and etc. 
This feature is not perfect, but it's very useful, easy to use, especially for one-on-one -on -one meetings and interviews. I mostly use the app to transcribe important meetings so that I'm able to concentrate on being present during the meeting and not worry about writing notes. Alter also records the audio when you're checking out the transcription and feel like certain parts are off. So you're able to listen back to the recording and edit the transcription. I currently use the free version because 600 minutes per month is free, which is essentially about 10 hours a month, and that's enough for me. But if anyone needs it, the pro plan starts at $8.33 USD per month for 6,000 minutes of recording per month. Alright, so the next app is Bear. Now, Bear is in the midst of a major overhaul, but it is still really, really good. There aren't many good native note-taking cross-platform apps out there that simply focuses on text. There's a new app called Craft that I'm really starting to like, but I don't think it is ready for prime time just yet. Now, what makes Bear special for me is its clean looks and its wiki links. I am able to create and connect two pages by simply typing out brackets. Clean and simple, I use Bear to write all my text needs. Sadly, there is no backlinking for interconnected thoughts, but there is another app for that, which I will get to later. So this next app may be a boring one that everyone already has, but I just had to include it in the video, even though Aaron made fun of me for it because this app is essential to my work. Everybody's using it already. So this app is OneDrive, right? Everything on all my work devices, which includes my iPad Pro, my MacBook Pro that I use at home, and my M1 Mac Mini that I use in the office, are stored in the same OneDrive folder that is automatically and immediately synced to all my devices. I have made a point to never, ever save anything locally on my computers. This way, all the changes I make on one device are immediately reflected on all my devices. This allows for seamless work continuity, which is very important for me. For example, if I'm working on something on my MacBook that requires me to open up a bunch of photos, work documents from various folders, I'm able to jump off my MacBook at any time knowing that I can continue while on my commute or even when I get to the office. All right, Miro is another app great for students. Take the infinite canvas in concepts and add in some structure and you get Miro. Now, Miro is a mind mapping collaborative tool, kind of like a whiteboard, which you can easily add in shapes, arrows that follow each other around an open canvas. On top of that, you're also able to write anywhere on the open canvas. This is great for brainstorming. And as a student, sometimes my mind maps needs to be a little bit more rigid. However, sometimes I also just want to jot down some notes very quickly. And this app lets me have the best of both worlds, the flexibility to switch from a free form to a rigid structure at any time on the same app. So this next app is a complete no-brainer, Google Calendar. I am not going to talk about its features because I'm sure everyone knows how Google Cal works, but I'm going to show you guys why Google Cal is so essential for me. So aside from using it to plan my meetings, dinners, and other social activities, I use it to time block. I do two different types of time blocking. First, at the beginning of every week on one calendar, I set aside chunks of time for broad categories of activities like work, dinner, eat, sleep, etc. So that I have a bird's eye view of the entire week and how much time I have to allocate to work and my other various tasks. And then, every morning, I time block specific tasks using the Todoist and Google Cal integration. And honestly, this was the game changer for me. I set up a two-way sync so that all the tasks with time set on Todoist will populate my Google Cal. And if needed, I'm even able to add tasks on Google Cal that will appear on my Todoist app. This way, I'm able to visually look at the tasks I set out to complete today, see if I'm being over-optimistic or if I'm able to squeeze additional things in. It's much easier with Google Cal because I'm also able to estimate how long each task is going to take and adjust accordingly which is something I can't do on Todoist. I love time blocking tasks for the day so that I don't waste time staring at my to-do list and deciding what comes next every time I'm done with a single task. My main gripe with Google Cal though is its lack of natural language processing that apps such as Fantastical has. Scrolling through the date and time picker is such a waste of time, but Google Cal is free, so it's good enough for me. Sometimes I only want to carry my iPad around and my MacBook is just left at home. 
And yet there are times when I really do need to access my Mac. And that's where Jump Desktop comes in. This is by far the best iPad remote desktop solution I have found. It connects fast with no lag and is pretty much always reliable. It also adapts the aspect ratio to fit the iPad so it feels like you're running macOS on your iPad because we all can dream. It also has very intuitive touch controls but it really shines. You are able to use your iPad just like a Mac as the trackpad solution is flawless. The double clicks, the right clicks, the drag and hold all works fine. So the next app I'm going to talk about is Todoist, which is a to-do list app. I've been using Todoist for almost two years now, and its most important role in my workflow is being my quick capture tool. It requires no load time and has a quick capture button at the bottom of the screen no matter which page you're on, which is so essential for quick capture, especially since random thoughts and to-do starts to pop up in my head usually at the worst times possible, like when I'm midway through a conversation with someone about something completely unrelated or when I'm watching a YouTube video or in a meeting. So I need something quick and instantaneous. Its natural language processing also makes keying tasks, due dates, importance and tagging projects so much quicker. Todoist has a free plan, which I think is more than enough for most people, but I require the use of labels and filters, so I pay 3 USD a month for the premium plan. Now, this last one isn't really an app, but more of a progressive web app, and it's Remnote. The brilliant minds behind Remnote are still trying to develop an iOS app, but until that is done, the web app pretty much functions just as well. Now, Remnote is the best app for all students. Everyone should be using it. I'm currently studying physiotherapy and there's a lot of information that I need to know. All the anatomy, the diseases and the treatments. All of it is important and RamNote really performs well here. Right now with the latest update, you're even able to insert PDFs into RamNote and extract information out of the notes. Very similar to margin notes. This means that your handouts and notes will always be in sync. You can easily go back and forth between them with the click of a button. Now, for all you healthcare students out there, this is why Remnote is really great. Studying things from scratch and compartmentalizing things is simply not the way to go. Our bodies are interconnected. One area of our body is connected to another, and each treatment causes a cascading effect. When we start learning about different types of medicines or disease, we can easily categorize everything and add in templates to identify the cause, etiology, and the treatment. Placing a disease under one area means we may never ever see it again. And so we have tags. The next time when you visit anything under a specific topic, say cardiopulmonary disease, you're able to view everything related to it. As we progress and learn more, we do not need to create new pages or hunt for old ones. Simply open a portal and continue adding in info as you revisit your old notes. This is an incredible way to study, and when you graduate, you would have a library of knowledge at your fingertips that you have weaved together. The next app is a scanner app called Adobe Scan. I chose to use this app over the Apple Notes app, which now also has scanning abilities built in. I prefer to have an app just for scanning documents because they're much easier to find, and I also feel like Adobe Scan's capture and adjustments are a lot more accurate and more flexible than Apple Notes. Most importantly, Adobe Scan allows me to create PDFs out of multiple scans and easily share them to Notion, which is a place where I store everything. Speaking of Notion, Notion is not only a good app for work, it is also a great app for students and just generally life. Now, Notion is such a beast of an app that we will probably be going into many more videos specific to Notion. So today, what we're going to do is just run you through our home pages or live command center for me and let you guys get a gist of how our Notion setup looks like. This is my homepage right here. Now, this is called Journey. Um, it is kind of like a journal. This is where I just write what I'm doing for the day, um, is there any events that happen, what habits have I done, and then I track my mood here as well. And output is how many hours I have spent doing something productive like studying or exercise or cooking. Something that is productive then goes into outputs. And then we have notes. And then very similar to August Bradley, I also have a week database where I connect each of my days to, which then connects to a month and then a year. And Sarah's going to be showing you her setup, which is a lot more detailed. Right. Okay. So for my dashboard, I have my live command center up here. So it's a dashboard that basically links to everything else in my system. 
So I currently use the August Bradley's PPV system. And we'll talk more about this in another video. But basically, that's how I plan out my life. That's how I store my information. And as you can see, I have five different main sections here. So the first is focus and alignment. That's where my action zone, which is something similar to Aaron's homepage. And then I have my alignment zone, which is another dashboard. And then links to my vault, where I store everything, all my information, including the PDFs from um, Adobe Scan. I have my inbox, which is where things that I find off the internet go in. And I also have my notes vault. Below that, in the red, with the red dot, it's my daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, and yearly reviews. And then below that, my share workspaces are the places for all my different businesses. And those are the dashboards there, which I'll not be showing you here today. So on the right, we have my pillars, which are basically pillars in my life. So things that are very important to me and um, things that I'm working on at the moment. So I have my company there, which is tech on the business. I have different things that I want to learn, my mental health, my personal growth. We will talk more about pillars again in a future video. And then on the right of pillars, we have my databases, which is just links to all the different databases that I have. So it's very quick and easy for quick access. And below it is quick access to my projects, my knowledge vault, and my notes. And with that, we've come to the end of this video. So I hope you have learned something interesting and one of these apps is actually useful for you. If you find any of these apps useful, comment down below so that we'll be able to make a full review out of it. Remember to like and subscribe as well. Hit the bell notification. And whatever else the YouTubers normally say. <laughs> Bye!